So like I was on Instagram, yeah. Uh-huh. So basically, I, as I said, I log out of my my Instagram sometimes, and then like so I was out. I logged in, and then for whatever reason, I was on the Explore page, which I hardly ever go on. Yeah. Ah. I hard, are you an Explore Explore page person? Do you? Kind it depends. Of? Is not it? all the time, but if I see something, I'm like, okay, what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not like, I'm more or less on my feed. Yeah. So that's me, same mm. kind of. I'm going to scroll a few times and that like couple things. Then um, not couple things as in women, like just like couple pictures or whatever. Yeah, that sounded yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I just like I'll, like, I'll like like five things or whatever and then sometimes try to log out because it is a distraction. Isn't it? Yeah, definitely. But then, but then I'll just, you're like, there was a video thing of you that yeah. come up on my explore page, yeah. So I just looked at it and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this is really, this is interesting. So then I went and I looked at your YouTube video or whatever and then like, there were so many things that you mentioned in it that one, I already wanted to have a conversation about, well, one that I found very interesting, two, um, like there was like a, like some similar things that you went through that like, um, a couple of my family members went through as well. Mm-hmm. And also um, another dynamic of something that I've thought about as I've got older with like my nan and like fostering and stuff like that, which I was really around. So I wanted to kind of just have a, just a light conversation about, I just wanted to talk about life, but, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm like a big advocate of just having conversations with people that have like, gone through interesting stuff or have something to say or you know have have something that may be able to help people mm. or whatever it may be like you know what i mean people are always trying to hit up and want to have a conversation i don't want to have a conversation with a lot of people it's not i'd <laughs> like people you can see i like people or whatever mm-hmm. but i just thought i had to just reach out to you and see if you wanted to come and have a conversation with me about like what you know your life and what you've gone through thank you but um all right firstly where are you from as in area. Area, yeah. Um, so I'm from Plasto, East London. Plasto. You grew up around them sides, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Grime yeah. sides and that. A lot of the grime <laughs> artists and that are from them sides there. And uh, what about family? Like, what? where are your, where are your parents from? So both of my parents are Jamaican. Okay. Yeah. So, and they were both born in Jamaica. Okay. And then they came over like in their teens. Is one, obviously one's fairer skin. Yeah, or? so my mum's like fair. Okay. And my dad's dark skin. Okay. Yeah, but my mum's like, do you, do you, are, you from, are you Jamaican? Yeah, I'm Jamaican. So yeah. you, have you heard of, um, you know, St. Elizabeth? Yeah, right? of course. Yeah, so yeah, 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 my mum's from there. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, my, my family from St. Anne's. Ah. Yeah, so I, yeah. Do you go over quite a lot? Yeah, well, I was in Jamaica last year. I went to Jamaica last year um, in May, and I'm going again this year. Um, I love it. It's like home to me. Yeah, I so love you know Jamaica. Me? I'm going yeah. next month. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you're gonna just miss the Buju stuff. The Buju's doing a show in yeah, cause, cause in w- March. Is it March? Mm. Oh, man. But don't worry, you're still yeah. enjoying it. So yeah. do you go and see family and all of that type of stuff? Yeah? No, because most of my family is here now. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, most of my family is here. I've got we've got like some family over there, but yeah. um, yeah, but most of my close immediate family are over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So what was like, you had a real interesting childhood. Yeah. yeah? And like a real, like, a, obviously it's hard to probably put into words, like what, how you must have felt growing up as a, as a, as a child, like you lost your mum at, um, at a really young age. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Um, so my mum passed away when I was, I think I was about three, it was like three and four. Yeah. Um, and it's much, it's really like hard to say it, but um, yeah. So um, the video that I'll just go back to the video. Yeah. The video that I put out was just me explaining how, how I lost my mum mm. and um, like tragically my, my dad murdered her. Yeah. And um, so that kind of made like see, obviously something like that happening it just it's a big thing isn't it's it? a big thing and it's just like I don't, it's just yeah as like, like as a three-year-old though like as a f- like three or four-year-old like how do you process do you think do you like can you remember like how you process that like at that age do you know what i think 
I went to it like it's crazy. I remember like my nursery years, which is is like, it? Yeah. Oh, that's mad. Actually, I remember mad shits about like like when I was proper young and that. yeah, like I remember nursery and like that kind of age, and um, but I, I I can't like obviously I don't remember like the day or whatever. But how I old? Do... How sorry? How old you in nursery? Like. Uh, yeah, like three, so like three, three and four, five. Because three. school, you're four, four years old. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. So it's a year or two before that. Shit, yeah, nursery's no, so mad young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, it's not that like I, can, I can't remember, like, the exact day or anything like no, that. Of but I remember, like, missing her. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I know, like, I remember, like, in nursery, like, them always, like, having to, like, console me a lot and stuff mm. like that. And um, It's because you don't really know... You don't, you don't you understand. Don't, you don't understand. You don't understand. It? And you it's just... like, you, you're like, the, it's like through, like when I was growing up, it was like through different ages, you have a different thought process about it. Mm. So like when I was like really young, I was always just like more so like, oh, my mum's in heaven. Yeah. Kind of thing. Oh, yeah. my mummy's in heaven. And, and then you get older and you're like, hold up but she was killed by my my, my dad like yeah. you're like oh my dad really done that and then these times I used to like speak to my dad when okay. he was in prison so he used to like phone like the house and we'll talk to him in the mornings and stuff like that but then you start thinking hold on this isn't like you start processing yeah it you start to process it a bit differently so I think as through through my life I've had to process it differently at different points of my life if mm. that makes sense it does I think you know like I've said before, yeah. You see, like every five years, yeah, in life, anyway, every five years, there's a lot of things that just change in terms of like maybe in your thought process, like yeah. how you think about things, just the things that you have around you, and all of that, yeah. Like you just have a different perspective of things every five years, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that like like it's not far fetched to say that like for you over a period of time, like you must of your mind every period of time. Must yeah. Have been like, like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because there was a there was a point where I was just angry, like just mm. like because for a long time, like I knew, like obviously I won't go into too much detail, but mm. I knew like the way that he done it and all this sort of stuff, but mm. I didn't know everything. Mm -hmm. So then when I got to about like eighteen, I was like, okay, I need to find out like all the information, and started like when I started to find out how and. That's when really I was difficult. like, no, nah, I can't. I, then I don't really speak. I d like my dad still tries to contact me. Yeah, but I'm not like I'm not really on it to be honest. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I think again, it's just like trying to get your head around something so so extreme. Yeah, like, of it's just extreme because it's like it's different. If it's it's not even different. It's just like it's just it's just very extreme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? What age like? You see, like, cause that's interesting, yeah? See, like, when you said, like, when you were young, yeah? And you're, like, your mind, you're just like, oh, yeah, like, mummy's in heaven sort of thing. So you mm. have this, like, concept of, like, where your mum is and stuff and whatever. And, like, one day you're going to see your mum or whatever. Like, how old was you when you, like, started to, started to realise that, right, hold on a minute. Like, she was essentially taken away from you. Yeah. I think... Definitely about, I don't really know what age, but mm. I I think I started to feel that way more so like secondary school and like, no, no, do you know what, year six, I think. Mm. Like the end, or you know, like you go into year seven and I think when you're in like primary school and everyone's mum's picking them up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're yeah. like, oh, like I want my mum to pick me up. And of course. like Mother's Day will come and everyone's making cards in the class. And that's when I started to be like, nah, like this is, this is just. Do you know what? That's another thing that I just missed out here when I was just talking about how I felt. Cause I remember your, your video was, you dropped that around um, December. Yeah. And like, I'm a person, yeah, who like, sometimes I think too deeply about things at times. And like, this is, I wouldn't say that this was one of those moments, yeah. Mm. But I do like, at times at Christmas and stuff like that, I always think about, I always look at like my life and my situation or whatever. Yeah. And like try to find obviously all of the, the positives of, and be grateful of certain things. But then I also like look at the world, yeah, and think, rah, like there's people that at this time of, at this time when everyone's with family or whatever it is, like they don't, 
They don't. They're not. They're not gonna be able to have that sort of comfort of being able to be with like their parents or yeah. whatever. Is it still like even now? Yeah. Is it still like a? Is it still tough for you like around them sort of times of the year? Do you know what? At the moment, no. No. But there was a time that it was like that because I like for example, um, like when, so I was uh, when my so when my mum died. Obviously, you got my dad's side of the family here. Yeah. Mum's side over here. And then it kind of, me and my brother was like in the middle. And I lived with my dad's twin. Is your brother older or younger? He's older than me. Oh, okay. So I didn't see my mum's side of the family. We got kind of separated. And I didn't see them. I didn't I didn't meet them again until I was like 21, okay. 20. Well, your mum's side of the family? Yeah. Wow. Um. So I saw them when I was, ki- when, when we was obviously, when my mum was alive, we saw them. We, mm. we was all close. And then soon as that as my mum soon as my mum got killed, like it just obviously the the court case, mm. the trial, it was like all over the news. Like obviously mm. it's just two families at war. Of course. Do you know what I mean? And um So did you spend like did you spend the majority of the time then with your dad's side of the family? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So like how was that? <sighs> that was it was like because I lived with my um, with my aunt and yeah. we didn't get along and I think she didn't really treat us like the best. Like she done her she done her best, but it was I don't want to like like yeah out her or yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But um, it weren't the greatest, you know. Yeah, I mean, at yeah, times yeah, yeah. And, it, and I think our relationships were quite strained. Okay. So by the time we were by the time I was eleven, we was in care. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Fully, we used to go like respite care where you go like every weekend okay. or every other weekend. Okay. But then eventually that just turned into like, she was like, nah, yeah. like, I don't want to do this anymore. But as I, as I, with the whole thing, what you're saying about the whole five year thing about your thought processing, I think back then I was angry to be put into care. Okay. But then now I think she, my aunt was in a position where when my dad killed my mum, mm. she was over here on holiday, like, cause she was from the States. Okay. So then imagine you just come over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then this that, this uh, crime happens, and yeah. now you're left with two children, and do, do you know what I mean? So, in that sense, I kind of have to be a bit more like, you know, what she done her best, of but course. it just didn't work out. But my dad's other family, like, like, it was crazy because I wasn't brought up to like hate my dad. It was never like, oh, you should never speak to your dad ever again. They still love him. Do you know what I mean? Like they they used to contact him, but they used to contact me. So it was like a. It wasn't like I was told, oh, you can't do this or you shouldn't do this. It was like, that kind of came from me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what sort of support do you get? Like, do you get any type of support? So when you're young and you go through, like, something like that, yeah, do you get, like, a different type of support from somewhere else? Like, do you have to sit down with, like, do you go, like, through child counselling or anything like that? Like, do you go... It's like somewhere else to just speak about stuff or was is it literally just like you sort of get taken in by the closest family member that just loves you essentially um no because i think when with this situation it was quite hard because and these are these are things that i found out later from when i when i regained like contact with my mum's side of the family i was able to get like their side of the of the story mm. so when I when my when we got when my dad's side got full custody of me and my brother, it was because my my dad wasn't guilty. Okay. So he still had. Um, he had like li- he had like rights. he had rights to yeah. be able to. Okay, that's yeah. Because I was thinking straight away. Mm. Usually, well, not usually, but you would think that in a scenario in which you went through, like usually you would go straight to the side of the family that was victimized essentially. Yeah, no. Do you get me? Because he still had rights, he was able to sign over, like, and say, I want the kids to go here. Mm. So. Yeah, that's such a, like, it's nuts, man. Like, I got um, a family member, yeah, who, I'm not gonna speak too much for him, because I think one day it would be good if he actually came and, and talked about it, because he's one of my older cousins, yeah? There's a few of them, but like, you know, it's weird. You know that like, there's so many things that happen when you're young, yeah? And when you get older, like there's things that happen when you're young and you just don't really think about it too much. And you get older and you think, rah, like 
that's what happened and you start to well for me anyway you start thinking about like how that might have made a person feel and mm. all of that but I got a, um, an older cousin or older cousins but just one in particular that went through a, a, a similar situation as you where their dad killed their mum and stuff and I remember like one time um, like being at his house yeah and obviously this happened before I was even born mm. but he never had he just never, he couldn't speak to his dad after mm. that. He just couldn't. His dad spent a certain amount of time in jail or whatever, came out. But one of his brothers was able to have a relationship with his dad. Mm. And the older sister, um, she eventually passed away. She went through a lot of like like psychological things and stuff. Yeah, because you could just imagine as well, seeing stuff as well. But yeah. like, but I remember him saying to me, he came to me one time and he was like, oh, like, cuz, basically his dad was... Um, wasn't well, yeah, and he didn't know what to do. Like, mm. should he go and see him? Like, go and have a conversation with him, or should he not? Yeah, and I remember saying to him at the time, like, I I remember saying to him that you kind of go with how you feel, but I think that like, maybe if it meant that you had to go and tell him, because he's never been able to tell him how he actually felt. I said mm. if you are able to go and tell him how his what his, his actions, actions did to you yeah. and how that made you feel then even if it meant that you was telling him some of the hardest truths ever mm. yeah and it was not nice then maybe it might be good for you to kind of get that off your chest off your chest yeah. and that but i don't think that like i can't remember whether he did or he didn't i don't think that he did i just don't i think that like it was a too deep of a pain yeah. to be able to to, to do that yeah. yeah but see like at this stage now yeah like with like everything now like how how like are you able to have a are you able to have a relationship with your with your pups now or now do you know what i because he's are he's still in jail just for so context my dad, yeah my dad's yeah, still, still in jail um so he's like he got about 26 years okay. 25 now he got 18 actually but then for some reason it's like I think because of the type, the, the, the crime, I think back then, yeah, they looked at it like, okay, if he would have done that crime in this day and age, he would have got more. So yeah, they kind of yeah, had to like increase it kind of thing. Okay, wow. Um, but they, they could do that, yeah. That's interesting. Wow. They can yeah. change your tariff, I don't know. I don't wow. know how it works, but they can change it. Is it? Yeah. Shit. So they, been, they, what they can do is they can literally like ass sometimes look back, assess the type of crime. Because yeah. obviously, yeah, like, at one point, you could commit a certain type of crime and be inside for a less, like, they might yeah. give you a time that is not even that long, yeah, considering like, to what it... It depends what you get, because I think... Sometimes you could do more than... With my, my dad got life, and then the life... Ta I think the life tariff has changed. Yeah. So I think... I'm not sure, but I think it was 18 years, but now I think life is a bit longer. Longer, than yeah. 18. Life's 25 now, isn't it? Exactly, hence mm. why he's doing having to do 25, yeah, yeah. because he got sentenced to life. It's different if he got sentenced to, like... 18 or whatever it is but he got sentenced to life so. yeah oh so as the life tariff changes yeah so yeah life. exactly can i get my colors yeah because it's chapping in it yeah I'm like, yeah oh. hey goosebumps and everything oh, flip it now it's a tiny bit in it i don't have to pattern up the, the thing you know what i mean the jacket's lit though can't thank I? you yeah. thanks a lot black's my favorite color as well oh, so. thanks but yeah but yeah um as as far as like a relationship with my dad, I don't think I could do it. Not right now. Mm. I don't think I could. Do you know what? Because I just think it's the mental, like you said about, like imagine me being cool with my, I don't know. Not mm. right now. I don't know if that, I don't, I just, I would find that quite hard. Yeah. And I think that's like, because even when I started to check like the YouTube and stuff. Yeah. That was just me just saying, do you know what? Let me talk about this because... I thought that was a really... Trust me, yeah. I'm going to tell you right at the end of this conversation anyway. But I think that, you like, what you did was a proper brave thing to do. And I think it was a good thing to do. And I Thank really you. do think that, like, you know, when you, when you do have the time, like, set some time aside and you know, make a video every couple of weeks or every month or whatever and just say how you feel. Yeah. Like, say how you feel because not only will it be helping a lot of people, yeah, it'll be helping you, I think, yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. And that's mm. the thing because I had been sitting on that idea, like, for, like, four years. Yeah. And I was like, I would make a YouTube and then, like, 
not really make that video. I'll just do other little things. Okay. And then I was like, you know what? Like, I just felt in my heart that that was something that I needed to just do and just take the leap because I felt like I never met a lot of people that had, I hadn't met a lot of people that had gone through the same situation as me. Mm. And I was just kept thinking, well, if you don't say your story, if you don't speak out or you don't say, this is what I've been through and I'm, and I'm still here and I'm okay. Mm. There's people out there in that right now. And by you not saying anything, it leaves them in that darkness. Yeah. So as much as I was scared to put it out there, because it's not something that I'd openly spoke about. No. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, like obviously my close friends and stuff, but other than that, it wasn't something that I'll just talk about. Like yeah. even if I was at work and people say, oh, like, oh, what's your I would just keep it brief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't come out of it. Yeah, yeah. So it just left like me dropping that video. I felt sick. I was like, oh my god! Like, yeah, you said that you were scared. I was. So, I was even scared filming it, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. In what my was you scared? What did you feel scared about? Do you I remember? Think I, scared, I think I felt scared more so like of what other people would think. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it just felt like I don't know. I think a part of me, I feel there's a little bit of shame. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I don't know. Like that sounds crazy, no, but it's not your fault. It's, it's not your fault. Exactly, but. Yeah you do feel that sense of like guilt mm. of what happened and you feel like oh, there's a sense of shame because it's, it's, cause it's like twofold, isn't it? It's like my dad and then it's like, my mum's a victim and my dad's also like the person who's committed the crime. So it's like, mm. I feel a sense of guilt. Do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not your yeah. fault, trust me. So I think that's what made me think like, oh, I don't want to say it, oh, yeah. I don't want to do the video, but I'd always said to like my close friends, like, oh, I really want to do this channel and, mm talk about just just be honest and talk about this these type of these type of things things do you know what i mean do you, do you feel like any of that ever affected like like how like your friendships with people like or even building friendships with people and stuff like that did any of that ever affect how you just dealt with just people in life do you know what i think for me i'm quite a positive person yeah so i always try and like I never wanted, like even growing up in foster care and stuff like that, I think I always knew that there's a statistic that, oh, you might not be able to do well in life because you didn't have your parents or because you've been brought up in care. There's always that kind of like stigma. But for me, I kind of use that to like, to be like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna let this like, Word. you know, do you know what I mean? And Word. it's like, even when I got put into care or like when I got mistreated by family members and whatever, I used to just, in my mind, even as a kid, I'd be like, one day, yeah, watch. Like, <laughs> one day. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? yeah. That's just how I used to be as a kid. Like, yeah. what, I'm going to make it one day. Not even like, like even if just, because for me, even just like just being a, I just wanted to just do my thing, just like, just live life and be positive. And yeah. Yeah. So for me, it never affects, even like with my friendships, like, I, I try and be, that I'm very like loving. I'm really mm. like if if you're my friend, you're my friend. Do you know mm. what I mean? So I've I kind of use I kind of use this situation to be more so of like because I've lost a lot mm. and I know what it's like to lose. Yeah. And to not have. When I've got someone that I care about in my life, I will. I, I just have to like. I'm there for them. I will love on them. I'm just. I'm that kind of person because I know what it's like to lose. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I know what it's like to not have somebody in your life. So for me. I've used it in a positive way. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's probably what's even driven me to share my story because I feel like, let me just, if I have to be open, then at least, um, I, was like, I, kind of, I, I feel like that's my way of being positive. Definitely. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, I hear that still. I think like, lo like, even conversations in general, yeah, about losing a parent and that is real difficult for a lot of people to have. Like, mm. especially with people that, have their parents like for me i still have my parents yeah do you know it's weird like sometimes i've actually thought in my head yeah it, this is gonna sound so mad yeah but then i i think like and i'm a very positive person but you know you just have them one little moments like when you just slip and you start thinking mad stuff and i started looking and i was thinking raw like i've got bare grief to go through like i've actually got a lot of grief to go through mm. because i still have both of my parents who you know, if if I don't pass, they're gonna go. My yeah. grand, my my great grandmother is still, a, and like I talk about my great grandmother all the time. She's a hundred years old. Yeah, she's at a stage Jeez. now where it's like, 
You know, like she's just ready to go. Mm. And it will be sad when she goes, of yeah. course, yeah? yeah. But like, it's a bit different. She's lived her whole life and all of that type of stuff. Of course, you're going to be upset that. But that then is that, then is my granddad and all of these type of things. And then like, you know, I, I look at like some people who don't have their parents and I think, rah, like, rah, you're mad strong. Like, I don't know like how, like how that, how it would affect me or, or like, I don't know how I would be able to find the strength in, in all of that type of stuff as well. Mm. I'm not even like, I don't even really have a question to ask in it, but I do think like, is there, even though like what happened with you happened at such a young age, yeah? Is mm. there a such thing as moving on? Like, like, can you move on from it? Is that a thing when you lose a parent? Nah, I don't, I don't think you can move on from it. I think you can, cause it, it, it's like, it's, it, it just, as much as you, you're you're a part of them, Yeah, they're a part of you. Do you know what I mean? So for me, I don't think, I've moved on in a sense where I know like, if, if, like for me, I just feel like, I don't think I could get over losing my mum. Yeah. Or the pain of it, but I can channel it to better things. Yeah. In that sense. Yeah. But I don't think I would ever be like, oh yeah, I'm cool. Yeah. Cuz there's cuz then there's times when you think you're okay about something and then you're, and not. you're not. Yeah. And you think, "Oh, right, where'd that come from?" Is it like do you get moments where you're literally like you just feel mad down and you don't necessarily know why it is and then all of a sudden it's like, no, yeah. I know why it is like." Yeah, definitely. Definitely. How do you deal with that? It depends, like, like it depends. Cause I'm, if I'm, if I'm feeling down, I'm more of like a person. I will just like zone out. I'll just go into my own space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Like, thank God for music. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Hey, music is yeah, a music, when you did no music. deep it for a minute. Yeah, mm-hmm. music is a blessing. It's a blessing. Trust me, because, like. The amount of times, yeah, you could be going through something, yeah, and you fling on a one album. Mm-hmm. Like, there's there's certain albums, yeah, that you will go back, you'll listen to, and it will just take you yeah, back to a certain you, yeah. plate, like an exact spot. Yeah. Uh, literally mm-hmm. an exact place. Or, like, give you a certain type of feeling every time. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? Mm-hmm. It works both ways as well sometimes, because you can listen to a song. And it could put you in a bad, bad place. place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Thinking of that, I mean, I, this is another thing as well. It, it's, it's like, it's comfortable and it's not comfortable to talk about it because obviously my mum is a very open woman, yeah? So she's like already told me, you know, when I die, this is there, that's here, whatever. But like, I listen to like a Luther Vandross song and that, yeah? And sometimes I just have to turn it off because I think I know that when this happens, this song is going to be the song because my mum, that's what she yeah. used to, I always just have them moments of like being young and like her being in the yeah. front room, like dancing to these songs or whatever. And then I already hear it. I already visualise it. And I think, nah, I can't, right now, I can't even, I can't even listen to it now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But um, the foster care thing though, mm-hmm. like, so I grew up in and around that at a young age, yeah. So my nan, um, she passed away a long time ago, but she used to foster. She used to, she adopted and she fostered, and she was also an immediate foster carer as well. So it was like she used to have like sometimes people that would just come for one day, yeah, 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 and stuff like that, yeah. And another thing is that like being, I used to just after school, I just go to my nan's house in it. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, how I'm processing it is. I've just come from school and I'm at my nan's house and sometimes there's somebody there. Yeah. Do you get me? <laughs> like, sometimes there's just somebody there. Mm-hmm. And there was like, there was um, a couple that are like family members to me now, like she, that she adopted, which are family members to me. I was like, mm-hmm. calling my cousin and stuff like that. And like, they was just always there. And I never really knew, you know, I never like, at a young age, you don't think about, oh, you know, like what it must be like for them to be in a house that is not, that they're not familiar with or anything yeah. like that. And I remember one time in particular, yeah, coming home from school one time and I saw this girl sitting in the front room and like, in my head, I just thought, she's not playing with my toys. Like, <laughs> it's not that. Like, it's not, like, this is not, there's not a next one coming in yeah. playing with my toys now. <laughs> Do you get, because still like, you know, like, it's still like, at school, you, like, I'm interacting with girls and stuff like that, but not really. Like, I'm still just with the boys and whatever. Yeah. So to be in the immediate space of like a younger girl who's like just in in my family's house or whatever, 
in my head, I'm, there's it's not resentment, but it's just a bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like, I asked my mum recently, I was like, oh, you know, what happened with her? And she told me like, um, like her story and stuff like that. And like, she told me like some of their stories of like some of the people that were there and a lot, some had been like sexually abused mm. or had like, you know, fe- their family members were drug addicts and mm. all of that, yeah. But it makes me think now like, oh, rah, like what must it have been like for them to come in a home yeah. of people and it not be your family. And no matter what it is, yeah, no matter what it is that you go through, no matter how you might have been mistreated by like maybe your mom or your dad or like who your mum passing away, whatever it is, you always just gonna miss your mum, innit? Mm. Like you're always gonna miss your mum. Like what was it like for you? Cause you had a situation yeah. where you grew up in care. So I was in, I, I grew up in foster care. So I went into care from 11. So we was all, to be honest, we done the whole like, Going into, we used to do the like the respite care. So every other weekend, we used to go into foster care for like one weekend. And then what got, is that? I don't so understand. basically, it's like so it gives your because my aunt was like our main like guardian, yeah. so it gives her a break on the weekends. Like okay, so they you just go to a foster home on the weekends and then you come home. Does that still exist? Do you know if that still exists? I'm not sure. Okay, I, it, I, it probably does. Yeah. Um. So yeah. For, so when we went into care like fully. I was about 11, 10, 11 at the time. And, um, it, do you, it, sorry, do you remember knowing that you was about to go into care? Yeah, I and actually what was remember that the like? day, like, I remember the day. What happened? So, it was, cause it was kind of crazy. Cause like we were, so my husband, mom, like she was amazing. She passed away now, but she was amazing. Yeah. So, um, we had been to different foster homes before that as well, but Less, uh, this is the, the one, this is the one that I was gonna like stay at. So um, yeah. she was my respite carer at first. Mm. So we were going there on the weekends, and then my aunt, like she was saying, like to my foster mum, like, oh, can you have them for the six weeks holiday? You know the the school holidays. Yeah. And my and my foster mum was like, oh no, it has to go through social services first. You can't just leave them here. And then the six weeks holiday came, and then. Like after the holidays, obviously we're going back to school and stuff. Then my aunt just didn't pick us up. Okay. So then I knew like, okay, something's going on. Yeah, like, yeah, she's yeah. just like, <laughs> <laughs> she ain't coming back. Like. So like, obviously school started now. We have to go and buy a school uniform. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like my aunt's not going to pick me up. I'm like, cool. Like, but in a way, because the relationship was already quite, it wasn't the greatest. Rocky. Yeah. I kind of knew it was going to come. But, um, yeah, so then, like, from then... It was, was you cool with it? Say that again? Was you cool with it? Like, you know what, so, like did you see, like, when you realise that, rah, like, maybe yeah. she's not coming? Yeah. I, do you know what? I think when we had, when we had like, the official meeting, like, when they were like, okay, this is a, situ- this is a situation, this is what's going on, it's obviously broke the hut, like, this is broken down, like, where, in regards to, like, the relationship between, like, the kids and... My aunt, like she doesn't come back for us, blah, blah, blah. So obviously they called a meeting. They're like trying to assess like where we're gonna stay, who wants to take us. And I, I was kind of happy to stay at my foster mom's home, to be honest, I was just like, cool. Cause I just knew that the the dynamic wasn't the best. Mm. So for me, I was just like, I was scared because you're kind of going into the unknown mm. and I'd already been through so many like, changes in life mm. do you know what i mean so it was like for me i was like okay i'm scared because i don't know how this is going to turn out do you know what i mean you, do, you, you don't know do you mm. know what i mean mm. and it's like yeah so when we went when when that was decided that we will stay there it was more or less like i was kind of happy because i enjoyed my foster home yeah it was yeah, a nice yeah. place like do you know what i mean but at the same time it was a sense of like when i lived with my aunt that's all i knew Okay. So you're kind of like in a weird way, you're like, you're like thinking, oh, you're missing what you, like everything that you've known, everything yeah. that you've been bought, like that's that's of just course. gone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Was your, like, what heritage was your foster parents? Jamaican. They were Jamaican yeah. as well. Oh, okay. So yeah. in terms of food and that, you were still getting patterned up with the jerk I, and oh my planting God. You know and everything there. I was getting like, <laughs> Well, do you know Is what it? I mean? And it's crazy because when I was like in my teens, I was not into Caribbean food. Oh, really? Yeah. I was just, cause I think because I was around it too much. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, like. I what? don't know if I was either, you know? Like, I don't I don't even remember whether I was or I Obviously, 
going up in England and that McDonald's is the wave. Yeah, exactly. You get what I'm saying? It's the wave. And you know, on top of that, yeah? Oh, mate, I remember being mad young and going, there was a McDonald's right near me, yeah? And there's this guy. I'm sure he was an African guy. Um... And like, he used to pattern me up in, in McDonald's, <laughs> you know. Oh my God. It was around the time. You remember the times, yeah? Do you ever remember McDonald's when, I can't remember, like you take the strip off the off the chips and, then and you, you might get a, that monopoly. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they might pattern you up with a burger now. and all of that. Like, so uh, I, every time I used to go there, he used to line me up. McDonald's was my thing. Yeah. And like, so I don't even, I mean, that's just a, I don't know, I was just brainwashed at some point. Right? <laughs> but I used to have to eat my food. And I remember my nan anyway, my nan used to, again, being around like, so at my nan's house, I had like my cousin essentially, yeah, who was there, who was like, like was adopted. Yeah. And then like, sometimes there'll be like some other people there or whatever. And I always remember that like, sometimes we used to eat and if we didn't eat our food, like we just are, like we used to call her nan nan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nan nan, and I'm not hungry. And she'd be like, okay, cool. She'd just take the food. Then we just go and play, run up and down, whatever. A yeah. couple hours later, nan nan, I'm hungry. <laughs> she'd say, okay. So you go sit down. she give me back the same food, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, this time you're going to sit there and you're going to yeah. eat that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going to eat that. Dry. There's no burgers. Yeah. There's no nut. If you want to get the chalk ice, you better finish off that exactly. rice and peas. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you still, you're lucky anyway. You yeah. still had. See, when I, see, if I used to go and buy like chicken and chips or Chinese after school and bring it home and my first one had cooked, oh. she'd be like, <laughs> she used to go mad. Like, I just cook all this food. Yeah. <laughs> like, was it just you there then? Would um, you and your brother stay there or was it just you? Me and my brother were staying there, but then we got separated eventually. So, oh, okay. yeah. So, um, why? Is it you know like what? relationship? My was just like at, he's a, a great man now, but I think back then he was very troublesome okay. in his teens. So they just were like, he's got to go somewhere else. Not, not my first mum. That social services decided that it was the best. He, yeah, it was the best do. thing for him to go somewhere else. So we yeah. wasn't together for a little while. So. But, and there was no one else like in. The there house. was other other kids that came okay. came and went. But I was like one of the, like not the longest, but because I was there from. 11 to like age 17, okay. 17, 16, 17. So. What would you say was like the, the positive experience of like, of being in a foster home for you? Like what was the positive for you? For me, um, do you know what? I think it just took me out of the situation that I was in living with my aunt, mm. if I'm being honest, I think at the time, it might not have been something that I could clearly understand. But looking at my life now, I'm kind of grateful for it. Because mm. I don't think I could have seen how my life would have turned out living with, like, yeah, with, yeah sure. just wouldn't have worked out. What about the downside? I think the downside is just, there's a lot. I think the downside would be I think trying to find, know yourself, find mm. yourself. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. it's very hard to, especially if you've got like, like your family's broken. Like, cause I had to find out, okay, I didn't know where my mum's side of the family was mm. for a long time. I, I didn't, I was, like I said, I, I didn't find them until I was 21, not like 20. So it's like, I just didn't know a lot of stuff. Mm. Um, and like you, like when you're in care, you get like a file, so you can read it when you're 18. So you can read stuff on you. From yeah, like, yeah. So how are you talking from about that? that? Way you, like, I've got mine, and I've read like a few bits, and then it just gets too much because I've like read notes from like nursery and. So like, what is it like? The, it's, every, the, it's like self-assessment of you. It's basically anything that's been written about you. Yeah. Is in there. So from doctors' notes. So if you went counselling, their notes, teachers. A big file. Yeah, everything. Wow. Did you read it all? So I haven't read it all, but I'll do it on my channel. But I wouldn't actually. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. of course. Yeah. So yeah, on my yeah. channel, I'll probably yeah, yeah. go through that. Do then you know I mean? definitely do that. Yeah, because be that that you can piece a lot of your life through that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, but did did it make you like see like reading little bits of it? Yeah. Like, did it? Uh, how does it? I don't know. Like, how do you? How did it make you feel when you're reading it though? I mean, I can't imagine yeah. what. It's. Do you know what? For me, it was like. It just feels surreal. It's like, is this really my life? Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, what? Like, yeah. 
It's crazy. Yeah, like it is, that it? Yeah, and but again, because I didn't read like I only got hold of that, you know, like when I was about twenty, twenty like maybe like Late after I had left care, do you know what I mean? So when I became an adult, I was like, okay, I'm ready to receive that information. Yeah, well, but when you're in care, you kind of know parts of things. Yeah. And I think it's just finding out who you are. Like, I didn't even, because I didn't meet my mum's other family until later on. I'm even questioning, like, okay, what country am I from? Or okay. whereabouts in Jamaica am I from? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, little <laughs> things like that. People say, oh, you mixed race. And I'm like, no, I'm not. But, like, I yeah. don't know which part or who's or who, yeah. you know, I just... It's just there's probably though on a deeper one there's probably a really interesting story from a historical side of of where your family comes from and like which involves slave masters yeah. and stuff like that because yeah, my yeah. great grandmother she's mm. fair skinned so she's mm -hmm. like pretty much your complexion maybe just a little bit darker yeah yeah but she remembers yeah my great grandmother remembers her grandfather who was a slave owner yeah, I think maybe not so much now because she's at a place where she, yeah. you know what I mean? But at a time, like she remember, and there's pictures of like, she's got some really old, I wonder, I might bring some of the pictures actually, show them like some real old pictures of like her mum and and that like, and this is like my grandmother was born a hundred years ago. So then you think about all of that prior to that and then obviously their grandparents. And I think like, even with yours, mm. you do the same thing. There'll be a really interesting yeah. story. I would love, into to, where... I'd love to find out, definitely. Yeah. Like, I know both of my grand, both of my grandparents. Their, mo I think their mothers were white. Were white, okay. But like, I don't know, like where, like yeah. how that how? happened. Like yeah, and I would yeah. love to find out. Of course. Do you know what I mean? Because there was white people in Jamaica. Yeah, of course. exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, like some of which obviously um, were slave owners and stuff. Yeah. Or, whatever some probably were just married to slave owners and then you know some might have just broke up out of the relationship and got a one jamaican quickly <laughs> and do you get what i'm saying <laughs> there's like all of these different dynamics of that yeah but like okay what do you like what would you see like going through everything that you've gone through yeah yeah especially in like foster care and that is there anything that you feel that you wish that you had um going through um the, the the care system yeah i do you know i think i wish i had like more information like because like, for me i just yeah more information mm. more more support and like if so like i guess that's why I, like even starting the channel that's why i thought okay let me just talk about these sort of t topics because if I was in care and I was on YouTube, I could look up someone and say, oh, that person's been through it. Mm. So let me look at them. Mm. But yeah, definitely I think it would have been nice to have more of a support. Cause you literally at 18, you get a, like, you move out, you're an adult, that's it. Yeah, what done. happens? What you just like, once you're 18, you just bounce. Yeah. That's How? It. So you just think- What, on your 18th birthday, just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Serious? Yeah. No. I'm being serious. So what? explain to me what happened. So when I was, so for me, it was, I was 17. So when yeah. I was 17, they were like, okay, my first mum wanted to move back to Jamaica. Oh, yeah. okay. So they were like, okay, you don't gotta move. I was like, cool. So I went into like a semi-independent home kind of thing. What's so that? Which, which basically is like, like you, you, it's like, there's an adult there, but you're like renting a room. That's what it's like. Okay. So you're just doing your thing. You're I was I had a job at the time. I was like, I was working and doing yeah. my thing. So. You're just like living in their house yeah. until, you, until you're 18. Then literally two weeks after my 18th birthday, they're like, cool, here's your flat, here's your keys. That's you. Wow. At first, did it feel lit? Do you know what? Not... <laughs> You're excited. To begin when, with, but to then, begin when you, with, but yeah. then when them bills start hitting licking you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when yeah. cats attack, start, start, start licking you in the forehead. You start, yeah, I hear that still. Like, and it's, it, yeah. Like so that. you start getting, I you see, this is my inexperience, isn't it? Yeah. Or just my ignorance. I just thought you have an element of support until you are essentially just on your feet properly. Nah. Okay. I think it might have changed now. Okay. But back then it was 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
and because you was working and stuff, they may have looked at it as though you're essentially able to financially support yourself. Do you know what? I don't even think, no, no, not really. Man. No, it was like, it, even when I was like, when you're like 15, 16, they let you know, okay, you're moving up to this point where you're going to be living independently. So they kind of try and prepare you for it. But what 18 year old is going to really be ready yeah. to move out and be paying oh. bills? Do you know what I mean? Of course. Like obviously some people, like people do it, like I've done, I've done it. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You so, got through it in the end. Yeah, in the end. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, it's a quick. It's like, funny though, like you, the, the moment that you get that whole thing of, yeah, like here's your flat, blah, blah, blah. For the first day, it's lit. Yeah. It's lit <laughs> committee. <laughs> You know what I mean? All of that. But, you know what I mean? Yeah. Vibe, friends coming mm -hmm. over, all of that. And then I guess after a week or a couple of days or yeah. whenever, that's when it really must start to. Yeah, it's, like, a, it's, hit it's home a lot a bit. of pressure because then you got to think there's no, there's nothing to fall back on. You haven't got a family to fall back on. Mm. So say for example, I didn't get, out, I wasn't working. I'd, oh, I got made with, like if there's any like financial problems and I can't afford to pay my rent, where am I gonna go? Yeah, yeah. There's no like stability there's in no, the back. Yeah. Like, so for me, I just it just made me like. Listen, you better get a job. You got to yeah, pattern up. Yeah, you yeah. can't because you because I've always got to think about me and support me regardless. Like I can't rely on anything or yeah. anybody. Mm. Or any, like you can't. Mm. Not not no. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that. Oh yeah. my gosh, man. So like, and even like I felt like even at that age, like, even at eighteen, you kind of do need like that support. You do need someone to say like, okay, is everything okay? Like yeah. But it's key, isn't it? Yeah. I think. Like. Even just being able to have, yeah, have somebody that, you know, can monitor you in it. And gosh, that reminds me, I've got to message someone in a bit. I can't forget that. <laughs> Better do that in a bit. Remind me, you know. Yeah, I'll remind yeah. you. But yeah, no, nah, like having like somebody that you could just kind of talk to and just like get some things off your chest or get some guidance in it yeah. like, on, how, on how certain things work. Because ultimately, the system is like a game too. Mm. You know what I mean? And you don't want to fall short of the game. Otherwise, you, that's when you end up with bailiffs at your yard mm -hmm. and all of these type of things. Or, you know, you might not know so much about like credit rating when you want to go and buy a place and, yeah. and all of these things. That's one of the reasons why we speak about these, sometimes speak about these type of things. Do mm -hmm. you get me? But, um, but yeah, like, well, going forward in that, like, how how are you today anyway? Like, how do you feel today? Like, how has things been with you recently? I think, like, I'm at a better place like now. Mm. And I think like even me putting that video out, I never thought I would do it, but then I was like, nah, do you know what? Just 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 drop it and just like be brave. Did you sit on it for a minute? Or did you I did, you know. Yeah. Like I but I thought to so <laughs> I filmed the video, yeah. Mm. And I, like, because it was given do you know what? You know you've got an idea and then you know you should do it. Mm. And then you don't do it, and then you have this like feeling of like it's just on your mind, like Word. it was just like every yeah, day I wake up. Yeah, because I was saying, oh, you was like it's irking me yeah, or something it was like, like that. Like. It was like giving me anxiety, and I was yeah. like, <laughs> I was like, Gina, you need to do this, and it was bugging me. So anyway, yeah. I filmed it, and then um, so after I filmed it, now I watched it back, and I could only watch it once because it just like yeah, like I watched it once. I was like, cool. Then. Uh, I told my cousin, I was like, oh yeah, I filmed it. I filmed the video that, she, she's heard me talk about it for years, yeah. yeah. She's like, oh, you filmed it? Yeah, that's, that sent it to me. I was like, I was like, oh, I can't get it off my laptop. It's not, I, was, I think I just made up some excuse. Like, oh, yeah, my yeah, laptop's yeah. not working. Yeah. I can't get it off. Like the file's too big. Like just, just chatting rubbish. Yeah, and then yeah. she was like, no, you just use- The file's um... too big. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. So Them then, excuses there, you know. Like literally, then she was like, <laughs> She was like, no, you can't tell that to a tech person. Like, they'd be like, what are you talking <laughs> exactly. about? Exactly. And then she was like, no, you just transfer it onto, um, oh my God, what's that thing called? A oh. USB. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even that, not even that. Uh, what's that. What's that cloud that you use? We transfer. We transfer. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's like, put it on that. And I was like, oh yeah, true. So I've done that, sent it to her. She was like, it's really good. Mm. Put it up. So I was like, okay, cool, I'm, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And then I didn't do it. And then my best friend was like, no, come on, it's really good. And then I was yeah. like, do you know what? If the people around me that really love me, like, are going to support me, yeah. it's fine. Build that, definitely. Yeah. Definitely do that. I think I'm, I'm grateful for you to come and, like, have that conversation anyway here as well. Because I know it's not like, it must just never be an easy conversation to have in it. Um, so, yeah, like, I'm, I'm grateful that you come and... 
Thank you. Like that conversation still. Do you um uh do you so do you have a decent relationship with your mum's side of the family and stuff yeah. now as well? Yeah, yeah? now do, yeah, definitely because yeah. since like it's funny because since we like we gain contact, like mm. I'm really close with them. Like really, really yeah. close. And I'm my dad's side too. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm close with both sides of the family. Yeah. Um but my mum's side it's it's been I've been lucky to like find like we found each other, we're close, like we have a so that's but then I know for some people that might not always be their story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really close with them. And I'm grateful right. for that. So. Wicked. Well, yeah, do your videos anyway. Thank you. you. Know I, will. I, mean? I will. I will. I will. And just, you know, like, and anyway, just on the life one, you know what I mean? Like, I just hope that you get like all of the guidance just in life yeah. that you need, man. Because, you know, like sometimes, I'm an energy person, innit? You know, like sometimes, you can see something, you can catch a vibe from someone and be like, you know what, like, they got good energy. Mm. You know what I mean? And I sense that from you. That's why I thought, you know what, like, it, aside from all of that, I just thought, like, you got good energy, man. And, like, I know that you you spoke about, like, something that you wanted to do. And I just thought, you know what, I'll bring you here. And if you wanted to sit down and have a chat with the man them or whatever, they're not here. But, you know. <laughs> you know nice, no, been good. Thanks for cool. having me. But, yeah, Thank thanks you. for coming, man. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> Bad, 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 bad,